You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tosaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index, for in-depth and relevant information. SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more and now get ready to hit the option block all right everybody that music means we are back once again for a full week a full panoply of offerings here on the old options insider radio network and how do we kick it off of course with your bi-weekly options extravaganza known far and wide as the option block, my name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, to the aforementioned network. Welcome to all of our pro friends out there who've been joining us. A lot of new names joining in over the past week. Welcome to all of you. Welcome, of course, or I should say congratulations uh, to Mr. Pete 05, one of our other new members who won the January pro trading crate. So a little bit of beginner's luck there, but a good one nonetheless. So hopefully you enjoy the unique offerings that are coming your way. How do you join Pete 05 and everybody else? Get your name in the hat to win the next upcoming Pro Trading Crate. Of course, get access to exclusive shows like Options Oddities and, indeed, the Pro Q&As. We gave you double Pro Q&As last week. You never know when a double Pro Q&A week's going to hit just because we like you folks out there. Then, of course, live access to this, everything else we do. Bumping your name to the top of the list for all the questions, all sorts of fun. You never know what's going to roll out on the Pro side. Where do you go to find out more? Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. As I am joined today on the Monday episode by my compatriots, my partners in all things options and indeed 80s wrestling crime, we are joined by the unclest of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussaud from St. Charles Wealth Management, as well as the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. I introduce them now, listeners, because it is time. When we kick off our week. We like to kick things off in a little bit of style, get the juices pumping a little bit, wake everybody up, have a little bit of fun to kick off our broadcast week before we dive into the nitty gritty of the markets. So we've been doing this for a while, of course. Uh, it was Guess the 80s Wrestler via his entrance music. We have exhausted all the themes. So at the end of last year, we decided, <coughs> excuse me, we decided perhaps might be time to mix it up, go for a little bit of 80s wrestling trivia. Last week, as you'll recall, I threw at them the first ever. Royal Rumble, because it was Royal Rumble season, listeners. And uh, they kind of screwed the pooch. Big goose egg. I even gave them some bonus questions. Zero across the board for both of them. So we're going to try again for these folks. This time, we are going back to the mothership of them all. The showcase of the immortals. WrestleMania. In particular, WrestleMania 1. Uncle Mike and the greasiest of meatballs. Whoever buzzes in first, who can name the main event of WrestleMania 1? 
Buzz. All right. I had a feeling, Uncle Mike, this would be up your wheelhouse. Go for it, sir. What you got? Hulk Hogan tag teamed with Mr. T taking on Paul Orndorff and Rowdy Piper. Uh, That was the main event. Wow. Well done, sir. You crushed it. All right. Bonus half a point. Can you name any other match on the card? Uh, Let's see. Andre the Giant took on Big John Stud. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yes. All right, that, that'll, that'll be your extra. I say there were actually two main events. Uh, there'll be, that'll be your, okay. Hold on, and then uh, Mister. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I can't give you infinite bonus points. All right, I'll give you a chance for a total of two half points. So give me one more. All right, uh, Barry Windham and Mike Rotondo taking on Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheet. Yes, geez, okay, you're going deep cuts. All right, so you got two points this week. Right, I will be charitable. I will give the Greasy Meatball a chance to put his name on the board for a half point bonus point. Can you also, Mr. Greasy Meatball, name one match from WrestleMania 1? Yeah, um, it was, uh, yeah, Tio Santana and Rick Martel versus, oh, who were they against? Oh, ah, darn it. I can't I'm remember. I'm afraid time is up, sir. We'll have our Jeopardy music Greg in there. Greg Valentine yeah. and Bruce Beefcake? Yes, that's another yes, one. It was Greg Valentine and, and somebody else. They, they went, Brutus I was looking over here. They went all out on the spectacle of WrestleMania 1. They had Muhammad Ali as a ref. They had uh, Billy Martin from the Yankees as a ring announcer. The timekeeper was Liberace. <laughs> talk, about, talk about as 80s as it gets. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, you know, everyone thinks of WrestleMania as the big thing. The first one, only 19,000 attendants. It wasn't until WrestleMania 3 and the big Hogan Andre thing where it really took off 93,000 people. Of course, the first one did a million pay-per-view buys back in uh, back in 85. That was not nothing. That was the highest ever pay-per-view at the time, I believe. So that was certainly something. But intriguing stuff. So there you go, listeners. Did you know any of that? Did you enjoy that? Hit us up. Let us know. I know a lot of you love the, the 80s wrestling segment. But now it is time for the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for... The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Trading Block. A good start now to Uncle Mike. Getting some points on the board finally. I didn't like the big goose egg last week with the old Royal Rumble. Uncle Mike on the board now with two, a whopping two points. So the meatball. I'm going to have some digging out to do. Our last year's returning champion in the hole to start the year off. You know what else is in the hole to start this week off, at least, listeners, is the freaking market across the board. We're in the red. A little bit lighter than we were earlier this morning. The S&P briefly broke 4,100, got down to like about 4,098 or so before rebounding. Still off about 25 handles right now, or about right around two-thirds of a percent. Dow about 0.15%, NASDAQ closing in on 1%. All the major indices have rebounded a bit off their lows. For the morning, of course, a lot of things still weighing on the market. Pretty much a rash of bad earnings across the board. Tyson Foods, the latest, I believe, to uh, screw the pooch coming into today. Of course, those strong jobs numbers. On Friday, still kind of spooking a lot of people. You know, we seemed like we were in the era for a while there where good news for the economy was good news for the market and bad news was bad news. Now we're kind of maybe back to the good news is bad news mold. <laughs> that was that was a surprise to a lot of people. I don't think anyone saw that number coming. So, of course, and then, of course, the, the tech earnings on top of that pretty much across the board were, were just a disaster, listeners. So, yeah, a lot of things conspiring to weigh on the market, seeing some of that follow through today. But who knows? The market has turned a little bit. Maybe we will turn green again on the day. It's not exactly unprecedented. When we kicked off the show today, listeners, VIX 19 and a half up 1.6 points. So VIX can tick up again, listeners. It is not irredeemably broken. <laughs> it can tick up. This time up 1.6 points from Friday's show. Or excuse me, Thursday's show. VIX also can tick up. It's been a little while, but back up to about an 85. Puts it up about seven points from where it was on Thursday. VXX also up, up to about 11 and a half. That's up about half a point from where we were on Thursday. Uh, UVXY also can tick up, if ever so slightly, up about a third of a point, up to about a five even when we kicked off the show. SVIX, 17 and a half. That, of course, moving in the other direction, down 1.1 points. Uh, UVIX, 19, up 1.6. So UVIX doing its best to try to get back to its reverse split level of around 20. And then VolQ, 2430, up 0.7. Of course, if you want to deep dive into all things VolQ, uh, we just did one. On Volatility Views with the creator of VolQ, of course, Mr. Scott Nations. Look for a lot more VolQ coming down the pike over there on Vol Views in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but Mr. Uncle Mike, you are our winner today. A whopping two points, so I tip my cap to you. I had a feeling 
WrestleMania one was going to speak to you out there. So I, I wanted to get some points on the board. Mr. Uncle Mike, sir, as our winner, you get pride of place. What is lighting up your tape on, unfortunately, not an Uncle Mike type of day? Well, it is an Uncle Mike type day for looking to add some deltas, which I might be doing later this afternoon. So uh, what's lighting up my tape today is that we're, um, I, I think that just the party of the potential Fed um, lowering rates, the party's over from that standpoint. Uh, yeah, I think it was good that we had only 25 basis points, which I think that was a good thing. But uh, Mr. Bert, uh, Bertacki, Mr. Powell did not seem to be uh, too dovish when he was talking. So I think that was kind of a concern for the markets. Uh, but on there, I think that with where we're going, uh, we still could have some good things happening. Uh, we are still in a spot to where market stocks are down as well as bonds. And whenever that happens, it's something to where you got to have some concern over it, of course. Uh, so we do have that happening. Uh, looking in the commodity space, silver's started uh, since our last show. Uh, so we do have a little bit of a pullback along those lines. And then in terms of the sectors themselves within the markets, um, with what we're looking at right now, the, uh, we really don't have anything that's really sticking out. Uh, oil's down or energy's down a little bit more than the rest of the pack, as is XLK uh, technology. So we do have that. But overall, I would say this, if you want to call this a sell-off, uh, this is rather broad-based with where we're going on it. Uh, a couple of things that we're looking at as well uh, in terms of natural gas. Still really aren't able to catch a bid in natural gas. <clears throat> uh, we'll see where that goes. Uh, oil is continuing to go down. We're in the low 70s with oil in and of itself in the commodity space. And um, Bitcoin's still at the 23,000 level. I was thinking it may have gone up to, oh, I don't know, maybe 24,000 by now. But uh, it hasn't. Uh, so uh, we are seeing that as well. And uh, I, I think right now uh, we're just kind of seeing where the market's going to go uh, based upon what the Fed did last week. And uh, I think that I don't know if we're necessarily waiting for an event per se, but um, I feel like it's, it's an eighth grade dance type, type of market right now. Uh, who's going to get out in the dance floor first, the bulls or the bears? Um, 4,200, we did not top 4,200 in the SPX. We did get to, I believe, 4,195, if I remember, if I'm not mistaken, for our recent highs. Uh, we're down fairly significantly from that. We're at the 4,112 level right now as I'm looking at my screen. So we have pulled back a little bit. And uh, if you're looking to buy in a dip, this might be an occasion to do so, which uh, I'm definitely going to be looking and possibly doing some nibbling in the next few hours, but haven't made up my mind just yet. That's what I'm seeing. Look at you, degenerate bull, you degenerate Delta buyer. Never met a dip you didn't want to buy, sir. You're, you're the guy who created that hashtag, BTFD. That's all you. Uh, buy the flipping dip, maybe. But <laughs> profanity is something we don't buy use. The failed dip. Yeah. <laughs> buy the failed dip, yes. Buy the failed dip. Uh, Mr. Meatball, sir, you like a good dip across the, all spectrums of products out there. A lot going on out there. Uh, what is catching your eye out there in the markets today, sir? Yeah, I, I think the, the big things I'm watching is the continued uh, strength and volatility leading into Powell speaking tomorrow. Um, you have the Russell 2000 as hands down the leader on the way down. Uh, that's usually a sign that the market's going to have some trouble getting off the mat. Uh, it did try to recover midday. That got sold. Uh, we've seen some spouts of, of real selling come in today. Uh, Apple down a little bit, was down much more earlier, tried to even recover as well. Has not. Market been kind of stuck in about a five-point range for a couple hours now. Um, bonds are weaker. The dollar is screaming over the last few days. Uh, I think that's an important note. Uh, it's it's up two cents today. Uh, the UUP index, uh, which is the dollar bullish, back to its 50-day moving average after a pretty nice dip. And sitting at, if it closed here, it'd be sitting at, uh, you know, highs not seen since January 5th, uh, when that bull market really, when we got that, that big bull move in the S&P. Um, so definitely some, some interesting price action today. Uh, there, um, you know, a lot of the, the memer and the, the hot names, uh, down a little bit. The, it's notable that the Dow is the strongest index showing you that, 
uh, where money is buying, it's buying into strength and quality, not into uh, high momentum, uh, high tech, you know, high high beta. Um, we also have uh, uh, some of the drug names looking a little bit better today. Uh, Pfizer's, which been, has just been getting punched in the face, looks like it's starting to lose steam on its selling. Merck is actually up today. Uh, and uh, some of the materials look a, a little stronger as well. Uh, but across the board, uh, like I said, the things look a little bit, little bit heavy today. Um, you know, close below 4,100 leading into Powell. Uh, then you got to cons- get concerned that maybe we make a run back below 4,000. And you mentioned earlier, our friends at zero hedge are diving into the fray on whether or not all the zero DTE phenomenon is impacting VIX, something we've weighed in on once or twice, Mr. Meatball. What do they say? Yeah. Here? Yeah. They were saying that, um, you know, the VIX is dead because of zero DTE, which is wrong. But um, definitely zero DTE is affecting some of the uh, volatility of volatility. Uh, the VIX is not going to have, because of these zero DTE, you're not going to see the 20, the 50% spikes in a day the the way maybe you're used to. You're still going to see kind of big vol trends move. Um, that's still going to affect uh, VIX. VIX is not dead. Uh, but the zero DTE have definitely changed the uh, the speed with which it will move. Um, and, the, you know, they made a comment that, like, you know, VIX looks at options between 21 and 37 days. True. Uh, so then it's not looking at options that expire today and tomorrow. Untrue. Um, an option that has that expires in 23 days out to 37 is still looking at the volatility that expires today and is still pricing in that day's volatility. Uh, you know, it's a part of, of how that, um, you know, how options actually work, right? They're actually, in in a lot of ways, you can look at them as, you know, an option with 23 days is a slice of 23 day, twenty three trading days of action. Uh, it is not just, you know, what's going to happen at day 23. So you, you, you still have that portion. So VIX is not dead, but VIX has definitely changed. And I think that they do make some strong points on that. Points that uh, myself and, and Mr. Mr. Now, Dr. Rhodes have made on several occasions. And Scott and I were talking, Scott, you and I were talking about on Friday's show, uh, volumes. Yeah, I don't think any any cogent analysis can look at this tsunami of paper and say it, it has an impact. It, by definition, it almost has to. There's just so much. It, all that paper flow being cannibalized away from everything else and going into nothing but expiring today, that's going to have uh, some unintended consequences. I struggle with Zero Hedge at the end of the day because they have... Like you just pointed out, once in a while, they have some cogent analysis about volatility. And then they have Hillary Clinton as a zombie robot on there. And, stuff, and then they get censured by the CIA for being a, a mouthpiece for Putin. You know, So they're, uh, it's hard to take a lot of what they have seriously. But once in a while, an interesting – of course, everything's posted by Tyler Durden. So that should also give you some sense of where they're coming from, listeners. But still, once in a while, a little bit of cogent ball analysis slips through, even if they did. Just listen to our network and, and regurgitate it as an article out there. Fun stuff, nonetheless. Well, let's keep on rolling out here. Let's see. Speaking of Vol listeners, we've got we've got VIX on the old rampage, putting up some numbers. 720,000 contracts on the tape already today, listeners. This is kind of a, the new normal we're seeing out here over the last week. Ever since post-Powell, VIX has been just kind of in another regime from a Vol perspective and volume perspective, really. Uh, it's just been blowing the doors off. Again, the ADV is back up to 612,000. That already is nice. That already is impressive. That's up about 100,000 from where it was a week and change ago. So that's nothing to sneeze that in and of itself. And now again today, blowing past it already by partway through the show. So VIX just on another level out there. Uh, let's look really quickly. I know, Meatball, you said there was some uh, there was some funky spreads. Yeah, it was the June 3040 that's driving the paper today, listeners. About 123,000 times. Uh, that vertical going up. So nothing to sneeze at there. Uh, they're obviously hoping if they're buying that bad boy that maybe VIX not quite so muted. They can get a little bit of a dance close to 30 again. We like that, listeners? June 30, 40. I'll have to look really quickly to see if I can see. Where do they trail? If I hit the right button, that'll probably help. There we go. I'm missing people. You know what level they did that June uh, 30, 40 for? Yeah, I do. Um, in VIX, yeah, they bought it. It was it's they like about bought seventy nine cents, one hundred fifteen thousand of them. Uh, and 
it, they paid uh, 177 and a half versus 98. So um, what is that? That's uh, 79 and a half cents. And then they've also, they, there's been a lot of paper. They did, um, you know, the March 24th, 32, 20,000 times. Uh, they did some, you know, there was a buyer of the uh, Feb 20 puts, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and, you know, they've been buying those in tranches today. Uh, about 30 some odd thousand of those have gone up. Uh, and you've got, uh, you know, looks like they sold some April 50 calls as well. So it is, it is, this is the busiest day that we've seen. They had another, they bought a, a another big, huge spread last week. So uh, this is not the, the first set of, of paper that we've seen in VIX, but it is definitely, definitely interesting. Yeah, and it's also not uh, the pars or the 115s. Or it's, dare I say it, somewhat normal strikes, 30, 40. You could reasonably be talked into picking up something like that. You like that, listeners? June 30, 40 uh, for looks like around uh, 79 cents, somewhere in that ballpark. Hit us up. Let us know what you think about that one as we keep on rolling out here. The rest of the index is doing decent paper today as well. SPY, 5.51 million contracts, so on pace for its already impressive 9.05 million ADB, probably going to hit that today. The S, 1.4 million. The ADB, 2.7 million, so a little bit north of half of its ADB. Should we do that dance again today, listeners? Should we look at Let's look really quickly and see what is going on out here. All the top 20, take a guess. Yes, <laughs> all of the top 20, once again, expiring today. Let's expand it. Let's go out to the top 40, and I see one. I see two. I see three. I see four. I see five. Okay, so that's kind of about our normal ratio now of the top 40 we see an SPX, only five are not expiring today. Everything else is expiring today. Using our special uh, trade alert scan for the most active non-zero DTE strike listeners, it's the Feb expiring tomorrow. Uh, 4225 calls have gone up about 8,000 times today. And that's the biggest thing you're going to find out there that is not zero DTE. So that, should, again, tells you. Just how much SPX has changed. Is that impacting VIX? Of course it is. Of course it is. Let's go out to go out to the single name, see what's going on. Oh, by the way, the Q is 1.68 million contracts. Uh, the ADB about 3 million. IWM, 673,000. The ADB, 841,000 out there. All right, now out to the single names. Are the single names the land that time forgot today, listeners? Is it all macro? And the answer is no, because a lot of what we're going, what's going on right now really is driven by Single names. Once again, Alphabet hanging out at the bottom of our top 10. It's kind of been weird. It's been hanging out there for about a week and change now. And it, it's kind of unsettling. You don't see Alphabet up there too often. Usually that means it's a quiet day. But today, decent paper, 220,000 contracts on the tape. Alphabet off about two bucks right now, trading a little bit shy of 103. Again, good for 220,000 contracts on the tape. Number nine, AMD, 270,000 contracts. So the chip zone coming early today at number nine. Interesting. AMD off about two and a half bucks down to 83, but almost, yeah, about 83.60. So a little bit shy of 84 bucks. Of course, that was their 52 week low of 54 and a half dollars not too long ago out there. So they are well above it, like a lot of our names are right now. Let's go to Snap number eight. Haven't seen them in a little bit. 291,000 contracts. Snap bucking the trend up today, up nearly a buck, about 90 cents, trading 11.90 right now. They had earnings last week, week. Revenue, digital ad sales struggle. So they were down last week. I'm not sure why they're popping today outside of more buyers and sellers. But intriguing stuff out there for Snap. 52-week low for Snap was $7.33. Looks like they hit that back in October. So they have had a little while to regain some of their luster out there. Speaking of regaining their luster, have they regained it again today or is it back heading to zero? Looks like they're regaining it today. This is Bed Bath & Beyond, listeners. 301,000 contracts on the tape. Up 93 cents or 30 and a half percent today. So apparently uh, all is right in the world of Bed Bath & Beyond again today. Remember, this one was going the way of the dodo not too long ago. Let's look really quickly to see what folks are trading out there. It's the Feb expiring this week on the 10th. Four calls have gone up 40,000 times today, listeners. A lot of buyers on these bad boys. They're 61% biased towards the offer here. So interesting. Interesting. So again, they're hanging out right at the four strike pretty much. Those are at the money calls now. I guess Bed Bath & Beyond right now at least not going the way of the Dodo. Number six, the other half of the chip zone out here. We've got NVIDIA, 411,000 contracts. NVIDIA kind of off about 20 cents, so kind of a bit of a rounding error day for them. Even though they have rebounded, they were down about three bucks earlier. They have erased all of those losses now. So interesting day for NVIDIA. 
Number five, we've got uh, the Apes, AMC, 430,000 contracts, up 30 cents right now. They haven't had as much of a range. They got down to 605, up as high as 650. They're hanging out right around 640 right now. Again, good for 430,000 contracts. Hanging out normally where the chip zone's hanging out, AMD and NVIDIA, but they are a wee bit lower today. Number four, moving up the ranks out there today. This name has just been on a rocket ship to the moon ever since they started announcing their layoffs. And then now, of course, the the mother of all earnings season bait and switches. Forget about these crappy numbers. Here's $40 billion worth of stock we're buying back. This is, of course, Meta, the artist formerly known as Facebook. 187 pretty much even right now. Up another half a buck or quarter of a percent. Man, this thing was $88. <laughs> Not that long ago, listeners. Wow. Pretty much $100 north of that. Now, this... This resurgence spike turnaround, I don't know if you can really call it a turnaround. When you have to jazz up your stock by buying a bunch of it back, is that really a turnaround? I don't know. But uh, Meta, 476000 for number four out there. This name has just been... Ever since we did that poll, I think that personally offended Zuckerberg. When we did that, which would you rather buy, Amazon or Facebook? And nobody wanted... None of you. None of you wanted Amazon or Facebook, I should say. I think that really personally offended. He said, you know, I'm going to spend $40 billion on my stock just to prove you folks wrong. Uh, number three, speaking of the devil, we got Amazon here, 727000 So quite a jump from four to three. 476 for number four, 727000 for number three. That is the Amazonians off of buck 33. They're also looking better than they were at the time of our poll. Uh, they're about 102 right now. They got down to 81 and a half. That was their low. So they're about 20 odd bucks north of their low. Again, not 100 like, like Facebook. That still makes me chuckle whenever I say that out loud, listeners. Uh, number two, Meatball was just talking about these folks. I always joke the market doesn't like it when this one is red. Uh, they are red today. It is Apple. Of course, they've been on quite the tier of late. wasn't too long ago they were at a new 52-week low of 124.17. Right now, they're hanging out right around 151.80, off about 270. They got almost a dollar lower today. 150.90 is their low on the day. So they have rebounded off their lows. But still, you know, this is... Another weird one last week. They came out with some pretty, I think, fair to say middling. I think middling is charitable. They were pretty bad numbers. You're not used to seeing uh, no one buying the iPhone, but that's kind of the case. And yet they uh, they bought this thing anyway. It just uh, held their nose and bought it. So uh, this one, intriguing stuff. Good for 766,000 contracts out there. You know what number one is now. It really has taken the crown away from Apple. Apple, kind of a distant number two now. This is Tesla. Up four bucks today, 194. Another one that has kind of just completely reversed its fortunes. It was just at its 52 week low of 101.81. Not too long ago. How many articles did we see, listeners? The death knell of Tesla. Is it over? Is it time to short the stock? Is it done? Is the Musk era done? All these things. And now here we are, I don't know, a month and change later, not that long. <laughs> and here we are, nearly double that as well. 194, pretty much even right now on the day, up about four bucks. Again, good for 1.7. Million contracts out there. Earnings season. If you want to sink your name into the, some single names, well, we got you covered, listeners. Today, Tyson Foods, Pinterest, Activision, Blizzard, Take Two. So a lot of gaming names today. And Spirit Airlines, they of the infamous upsell. Uh, I think we had a listener post recently in the chat that if you fly Spirit, you have to pay extra for the oxygen mask to work. <laughs> that sounds about right. Uh, Tuesday, we've got BP, Hertz, DuPont, and Chipotle. Wednesday, Uber. CBS, Under Armour, Wendy's, Disney, a little thing called Disney, as well as Robin Hood. Thursday, PepsiCo, Duke Energy, a.k.a. The Duck, uh, Hilton, Hilton Hotels, PayPal, Lyft, Toyota. Friday, their nemesis, Honda. Let's see what we got popping off before the bell today. We got Tyson Foods. Again, all these reports coming hot off the presses, courtesy of our friends over there in Orat's land. Tyson Foods, Tyson Food ticker symbol, TSN listeners. Interestingly enough, they were pricing in... 5%. And by the time we ran these numbers, they had pretty much moved exactly 5%. So it was kind of about uh, they had pretty much evened it up after it seemed like things were going to uh, look a little dire for them. Of course, you know, all the issues going on in that neck of the woods, the input prices, everything else hitting that neck of the food chain pretty aggressively out there. Uh, it looks like Tyson Foods trading about a 61 right now off about three bucks or almost 5%. So they're still hanging out pretty much in that 5% line. So after looking like they were going to really uh, maybe... Not do that well. Looks like they're hanging out pretty much exactly where their straddle is now. So kind of interesting out there. I guess the market makers had it right on that one. Who else is popping off before the bell today? Everyone's favorite, Cummins Inc. They make engines and power generation products. Ticker symbol CMI. 
Uh, two fifty six eleven is where they were trading. They're pricing in three and a half percent. They delivered one point seven percent. So, not seeing a bunch of extra vol going in there before the bell today. Let's look a little bit later. Let's look after the bell today. Activision popping off after the bell today. SEC just announcing, I think, a thirty five million dollar fine for them. They've had a litany of issues over there at Activision, of course. On top of which, the Justice Department now hanging over their acquisition by Microsoft. So, a lot looming in their neck of the woods. They were pricing in, or they are pricing in five and a quarter right now. They're trading 75 and a quarter. At least they were when we ran this report. Wow, they've sold off today. They sold off three bucks when we ran this report earlier this morning. They're 72 and a quarter now. Wow. So they're already pricing in. They're already giving some movement out there, I should say, in Activision. Uh, in the past, they've moved two and three quarters. So they're pricing in a fair amount of juice for a name that should be kind of tied up in a corporate action right now. So that, again, shows you what the market is expecting right now. Let's go out to Pinterest after the bell today as well 27 and a half bucks is where they were trading their pricing in 335 in the past they've moved 416 so a little bit less juice in pinterest not a name i watch too much listeners so that's merited less vol out there in the online uh, pinning of your arts and crafts and things you're interested in recipes all that fun stuff is that merited i'll leave it up to you to decide take two another gaming name after the bell today a 109 and a quarter is where they were trading they're pricing in 841. The past they've moved 764. Looks like they've already sold off quite a bit since we ran the support as well. They're down to 10482 now. So they've sold off. Wow. <laughs> they sold off about four, almost four and a half dollars since we ran this report. So they're already getting some of that pre-earnings movement right now. Uh, they're coming for take two. You know, this is one of those ones, one of the last, last of the Mohegans out there in the independent game publishing sector everyone's talking about activision deal who was next to be bought out maybe it's ea or maybe it was take two and uh looks like market coming for them out there today uh, we got cvs later this week before the bell 85 and three quarters they're on the eighth uh, they're pricing in three bucks about 312 in the past they moved 321 so not a heck of a lot of extra juice out there i'm just trying to scan through these legions of tickers listeners find some ones you guys are interested in uber eighth before the bell 3309 is where they were trading. They're pricing in three and a quarter. Get this, listen. In the past, they moved 260. So a fair amount of extra juice out there in Uber. I think I can see an argument for that. Eighth before the bell, we also have Under Armour. 1112 is where they were trading. They're pricing in about a buck. In the past, they moved about a buck. So not a heck of a lot of extra juice out there in Under Armour. Disney, the eighth after the bell as well. This has been an interesting one. First quarter with uh, Iger back in the helm over there. How are they going to turn Things around right the ship. The stock has done a little better, obviously, since he's come back. It was in the high 80s when he took over. It's 110 now. Of course, a lot of that just the market running. Uh, so we'll see what he's bringing to the table out there. 110 and three quarters is where they were trading when we ran these numbers in the past. They've moved 410. Get this, listeners. They're pricing in $6.20. So that's a fair amount of extra juice. And again, given how much uncertainty is looming over so many aspects of their business a lot more competition coming on the theme park side other things some of the movies they're making maybe not performing up to expectations a lot of a lot of question marks along a lot of their areas of business out there so i can maybe see an argument for some more ball for diz uh robin hood after the bell on the eighth as well 10 and three quarters is where they were trading their pricing in a buck 10 in the past they've moved 95 cents not a heck of a lot of extra juice out there in hood let's wrap it up with the duck why not aka duke energy they're on the ninth before the bell Trading 100 and a half. They're pricing in, oh, wow, $2.91. In the past, they've moved a buck and a half. So pretty much double what they've moved in the past, listeners, for the duck. Wow. That's a lot. Again, I get it. The Nat Gas market, of which Duke Energy is a big player, is kind of all over the place. We were just talking about that with Dan Grams on Twifo last week. Seeing a two handle again in Nat Gas, that's wild to me. That's just wild. We were talking. Not too long ago, seven, eight, nine, ten calls, fifteen calls trading for size, and now we're back at a two handle and that gas. That's just mind blowing. So I think a lot of that being reflected in this nearly two x straddle we're seeing in Duke Energy. We got more coming up later this week. We got Lyft, we got PayPal. <laughs> Excuse me. In terms of the season, uh, this season continues to just rock, listeners. <laughs> we're averaging right now one hundred and forty one percent for this season. That's kind of ridiculous. Uh, this past week, week three, 135 names reporting, 154% delivered. That's kind of ridiculous. You can't really expect that to sustain itself. Uh, our average right now is 92%. I expect us to get closer to that before the end of the cycle. But right now, 
the early names reporting, uh, they are moving. So the winner is the over on this. Buying the straddles is the winning trade right now. Speaking of trades, no new earnings trades to enter or exit today, but we are still monitoring 48 long straddles and 27 long calendars for your earnings trading pleasure out there. As we keep on rolling, let's see what our Eye of Sauron found for us today. It is time for the Odd Block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Odd Block, the portion of the show where we get weird, we get wild, we get a little whimsical, and we see what's lighting up our tape out there. Let's see what our Eye of Sauron has found for us today. And Mr. Meatball, (laughs) this first one here, this kind of brought a smile to my face. This is a name that I literally probably haven't thought about uh, since the heady go-go days of the early days of the SIBO there when everything was rocking and rolling out there in the in the dot com bubble 1.0 and everybody and their mother was all hot and bothered about all things rambus you remember this name mr rock lobster oh yeah have you literally thought about this name in the last decade (laughs) you know what's funny about this is i had a long time i was you know i do um this monday morning stuff and uh one of the traders kenny is all about rambus right now He's like, this thing is going to the moon. I guess it's hot again. I, who knew? <laughs> Listeners, if you're not familiar, they make, of course, like memory chips and all this kind of stuff out there. And they, they were super hot. And, you know, in web boom, dot com boom, 1.0 listeners, that pit was hot. People were slinging options. People were fighting to get out there. I remember all this love for Rambus. Then it kind of went the way. The stock was obviously still around, still doing all right, but it kind of fell off the mind share for a lot of the investing public and myself included. We moved on to other things. But apparently the Eye of Sauron, listeners, has drawn us all back. We are once again focused on Rambus, ticker symbol RMBS, trading 43 and a quarter right now. They've had a decent year, actually, here. Kind of been a sleeper hit here, up 72% on the year. A year ago, it was trading 25 bucks, again, trading 43 and a quarter. It wasn't all upside. They rallied in March up to 33 bucks, and they sold off. In July, they hit their low for the year of exactly $20, 20 20.00. That was in July. And then ever since July, it's been pretty much straight up. They're up 63% just over the last six months. So a nice little run for them, topping out recently at about 44, 4510 actually, and now trading 43 and a quarter. So still pretty much within spitting distance of their 52 week high. And it looks like Mr. Rock, excuse me, Mr. Mr. Meatball, somebody thinks this party is continuing. Maybe it's your friend from uh, the money map stuff because somebody came in and scooped up. 2,500 of the no double, so the no 55. So A, they're going all the way out to November. B, they're buying the doubles, so more than 10 handle out of the money calls. C, they're lifting the offer for $2.45, listeners. They're not playing around. This is a 35 vol, if you are wondering. This is pre-earnings. They have earnings today after the bell, and the stock was a little bit higher, 43 and a half bucks here. But uh, I don't know. This one just... Uh, just got all sorts of nostalgic buttons flowing for me, Mr. Meatball. What do you think? You like these long-term, pretty meaty Rambus calls? Maybe your buddy would like them. You you know what's crazy is this is the exact calls he was talking about. <laughs> it was your buddy. It totally was him. I, I don't – I mean, this seems a little big for him, but that is just absolutely stunning. And, you know, and I looked and I said, you know, that is actually one of the better options to buy on the board. I don't hate it. Um and it, it just absolutely, this is bananas, Mark. The worlds collide, just like George Costanzo. You got to see your, shoot your buddy a message. Say somebody took his. I am. I'm slacking him right took now. His, like, okay. Took his trade to heart and put up 2,500 of these bad boys this morning. <laughs> yeah, you don't see a lot of people trading their earnings through no, but that's what we got going on here. And in Rambus, listeners, a name that literally, at least for me, time had forgotten. But now. Back on the move. Is this going to be a new chip zone interloper? Are we going to see them on our top 10 sometime soon? 
I don't know. Have you folks rediscovered Rambus? Have you never forgotten? Am I insane for having moved past Rambus? Have I been missing all the goodness out here for years? I'm curious. Hit us up. Let us know what your thoughts are on Rambus. Are you liking these Nov doubles like apparently everybody else out here on the planet today? I guess I was late to the Nov double party here in Rambus. I might have to take a second look at all things Rambus out here. Listen, this just this just cracks me up out here. Next, I'm going to be talking about research in motion. <laughs> all these other names that time has forgot as well, listeners. Intriguing stuff. Here's a name that time seems to like right now. We were just talking about him earlier. Uh, this is Pinterest out here. Listen, they have earnings coming up. Ticker symbol PINS, P-I-N-S. Uh, they have earnings. Let's see. They're today after the bell. Yes. So all the paper today is the pre-earnings tsunami. Pinterest trading 27.70 right now, up about 23 cents. On the year, kind of a eh year. A year ago, it was trading 26 and a half bucks, so slightly below where they're trading now. Then they sold off. They got down to about 16 bucks and change in the June to July time frame. That was kind of their low for the year. So the last six months, uh, they have recovered. If you just look at it on, on that basis, just the last six months, they're up about 21%. So nice little recovery for them. But of course, all that just to climb their way back to pretty close to unched on the year. So. Net, not a lot going on, but again, it's better than being down 20 or 30% like you were in the S&P or the NASDAQ over the course of the last year. Well, let's see what our eye of Sauron found, Mr. Meatball. Somebody liking the chances here for Pinterest coming out of their earnings, which again, are after the bell today, listeners. We've got 5,035 of the Feb expiring this week on the 10th. 29 calls. I said we're trading right around 27 and three quarters. He's about a buck 25 out of the money. Uh, they paid about a buck twenty for these bad boys, a buck nineteen and change on splits. If you're wondering, yeah, this is a hefty vol. I mean, it's a weekly, so what does vol really mean, right? One hundred fifty-two percent. Again, the stock was a little bit lower, actually, twenty-seven thirty-nine. So they're all they're getting a little bit of a pop already, but they're going to need it because they're they're swinging for the fences here, out of the money on these calls. We're going to know. We probably come back to these later this week on Thursday, and we'll know for sure how these are looking out here. So, Mister Meatball, did you notice these in in your flow? And what are your thoughts on? Somebody uh, going for some near dated upside here in Pinterest. Uh, I d- I did not notice them, but uh, you know, Pins already had earnings. Uh, you know, it's starting to move, uh, and yeah, you've got some uh, some calls. Looks like they they sold them. Probably uh, looking to create some uh, some upside. But we also have you know some May calls getting bought. Uh, and somebody went out and bought some Jan fifties, which is, is pretty aggressive. Uh, but yeah, kind of, kind of interesting, uh, interesting pricing action. Looks like they're buying and selling the, the, oh, you know what, Mark, they, they, they bought the 29s, ran them up to, uh, for starting at like 120, ran them up and then crossed the whole thing at 133. That's what happened, but it was tied up. Yeah. It looks like they could have already bailed on these bad boys. Because you're at four thousand, yeah. I they go up. You know, I'm seeing prints on the offer. um, You know, minutes earlier where they're buying them for a buck twenty, a buck twenty five, and then a couple minutes later they put the rest. uh, It look they trade one thirty three, which is the bid, but probably somebody that uh, that had already been buying them just ran them up, and then uh, you know, once the market makers were done selling. They crossed them at the highest level, which would be classic, you know, classic BD style. In your face. Uh, <laughs> ID, classic IDB style, you know. <laughs> so that, that's what it that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, some near data paper. Uh, they take their 13 cents, get the heck out of Dodge. I can't fault them for doing that out here. Yeah, it looks like a 4,000 traded a little bit later, listeners, like you said, for a buck 33 on the bid. So they could be already out of these bad boys. Uh, which is interesting. Maybe not even not even riding. They, like I said, they did get a little bit of a pop in the stock. So maybe that's all they were here for. That's all they needed out here. Interesting stuff. We'll keep an eye on these nonetheless. We'll know for sure uh, later on this week if they close these, what the deal is and how they performed. Let's keep on rolling. Let's go out to let's go out to a newcomer. Why not? This is Amplify Energy Corp. Ticker symbol Ampy. A-M-P-Y. You know, I like a good ticker listeners. The Rock Lobster accuses me of choosing these just for the ticker. First off, I do not choose them. The Eye of Sauron chooses. And B, I've never been known to look askance from a nice ticker. But I don't seek them out. <laughs> this one, Energy Corp out of Houston. So near the meatballs neck of the woods there. 
uh, Ampy, ticker symbol A-M-P-I, A-M-P-Y, excuse me, trading eight bucks right now. A decent year for them. A year ago, it was four and a quarter. They shot up, as you might imagine, for the energy name, up to about nine and a half bucks in June. Then back down, they hit, they started the year at their low, obviously, 392. And then they hit a low of 567 again in September, then shot up again October, back up to 10 and a quarter. It was like that was probably close to their high. Their high was actually 1038 around the November time frame. Then they sold off again to 679 December 9th and back up to 935 January 26th. And of course, the last few weeks for the energy complex. No bueno out there. So they've been selling off. They're off about a buck forty since then, back down to seven ninety seven right now, and to kind of unch down the day. But it seems like Mister uh, Mister Meatball looks like somebody coming into play here, and everyone's new favorite Ampy uh, scooping up two thousand of the April seven halves. So these are in the money calls, paying a buck fifteen for these. So lifting the offer. This is a sixty six vol, and let's see. Stock was a was a little lower actually, so they got a little bit of a pop on the stock, not much. And the earnings are next month, so they got about a month until earnings. Their earnings are on March eighth, so there are earnings baked in here as well. What are your thoughts, Mister Meatball? Kind of dicey swinging for the upside in energy name right now, let alone Ampy. What do you think, sir? Yeah, this is uh, this is definitely not one I've ever seen. Uh, but yeah, they're they're they. And markets are well for a stock. I don't. I don't really see that. I haven't seen very much. Markets are nice and tight, uh, and yeah, it looks like they think this thing's going higher. Uh, earnings are already done. It bounced off the two hundred. Um, they maybe just be looking for some reversion back toward the fifty-day moving average. That would make some sense to me. You know, it also makes sense. It's the strategy block. So let's get to it. It's time to dispense options, wit, wisdom, and education. It's time for The Strategy Block. All right, everybody. It is that time. The time you've all been waiting for. The time where we unleash the beast that is Uncle Mike. And he tells you how many SPX Deltas you need to buy. Go, Uncle Mike. Go. Uh, More. How's that? Yes, more. There we go. I want to talk today uh, just kind of in the spirit of um, I had mentioned this uh, last December in one of the strategy blocks. As the year goes on for 2023, I do want to get more tax related in strategy blocks. And so today I want to talk about the importance of using an IRA to your advantage when trading options. I think that's very important. Now, in typical financial planning circles, let's say you have some money in an IRA and some money it's not an IRA and you've already maxed out your contributions. I know I'm oversimplifying here, but uh, I think it's important with where we're going with this. Traditional financial planning logic dictates that you want your more aggressive strategies to be in an IRA. And the reason is, is that you can control when you take your and, and whether it's a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA, not going down that road today, but let either, either way. And the reason is, is because you want your, um, your gains to be tax-free or tax-deferred to whenever you want them to be. And you, you want to have more gains within an IRA. And you would take your more conservative strategies outside the IRA because, well, hey, you're getting taxed on anyway. Why not just have the make less money outside of an IRA? And a lot of times I do agree with that. And I think that can be important. However, there are times with which I don't. Here's a situation. Let's say someone is, we have a married couple and they are actually have an annual income with their social security. They're retired and they have social security, and whatever the case may be, their annual income is going to be less than $80,000 a year. Okay, well, if that's the case, then a lot of times what I would do would be to do more conservative strategies within the IRA, and then do more buy and hold stock holding strategies outside the IRA. What on earth am I talking about here? Well, here's why. So within the IRA, I think it needs to be more of a tax-related strategy. So if you're doing covered calls, for example, I think it's important to do those inside the IRA. If you own bonds, I think it's important to have those inside the IRA in this scenario. For your buy and hold stocks, I think you're better off having them 
outside the IRA. Now, why is that? Well, here's why. If you're buying and holding a stock and you hold it for longer than a year, you're subject to long-term capital gains tax on it. If it, I'm sorry, if you hold the stock more than one year, it's long-term capital gains tax. And with long-term capital gains tax, typically what people think of is that it's 15%. And in a lot of cases, it is. However, if you're retired and your annual income is less than $83,350 per year uh, as of 2022, uh, then your long-term capital gains tax rate is zero. So an example of this is let's say that you do hold a stock for longer than one year and you make a lot of money on it, let's say. No options, nothing like that. Well, then you got that gain tax-free if you hold it longer than one year. If you're married, filing jointly, and your annual income is below the threshold. Whereas within the IRA, you can do your conservative strategies like your bond strategies, uh, covered call strategies, things like that within the IRA. So what I want to mention today is just have an understanding about how tax rates work. Because if you do, this is something that can be of major importance to you and how you align your not only just your trading account, but your portfolio in general. And I think it's important that you have that understanding with where you do this. Now, of course, if you make more than the threshold, then your capital gains rate would be 15%. Now, maybe that's less than what it would be in your IRA. I mean, there's a lot of questions on that. Who knows? But the important thing is, is that you need to have this as a factor when determining where you go with certain investments for certain things. And that is the strategy block. First one for February. All right, everybody, now let's keep on rolling. It's time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, everybody, welcome to Around the Block, the portion of the show where we tell you what we're keeping an eye on for this week. Uh, really quickly, a year ago, let's, let's do a little flashback. I've been digging through some of our questions of the week out there listeners to see what you folks uh, had an had an eye on this time a year ago what we were asking you in the market and what your thoughts were on all this fun this time a year ago listeners uh, we asked you folks if you had to buy a 10 percent all the money call expiring at the end of last year on one of the following names so individual names and the s which one would you choose give you peloton the artist formerly known as facebook now meta obviously robin hood or just in general spy spx and about 42% of you chose Spy SPX. 30% of you at that time, kind of weird, were lacking yourselves a little bit of Facebook. That, that would, of course, transform in our later polls. Nobody wanted to touch it. Only 15% for Pelotons, no love there. Only 12% uh, for Robinhood. Kind of good deals for those last two there, avoiding those last year. But intriguing stuff nonetheless out there. Just give me, let's give you a glimpse of how you folks were feeling and thinking. We have all the data to back it up. So we'll be putting those out throughout the year, listeners, kind of give you a bit of a refresher of, of how you folks were feeling at different times during the year. Now let's see what we're feeling as we're looking ahead. Mr. Meatball, we will start with you, sir. Uh, what are you keeping an eye on this week? I heard a little guy with the name of starts with P is speaking this week, sir. Yeah, we got Powell speaking uh, tomorrow along with uh, Vice Chairman Barr. Uh, that is obviously going to move markets. Uh, we've got a, still a, a lot of earnings uh, that are going to uh, be heading our way, notably Rambus, obviously. Uh, but the because you know uh, maybe maybe we'll we'll uh, have Flextronics earnings this week too if we're lucky. Uh, and um, you know so those are kind of the and then I want to see what the dollar does. The dollar has really is really having an. Uh, a strong day over the last couple of days. Uh, I want to see if it uh, it makes a run and is able to hold this 200-day moving average. I'm personally waiting for CMGI earnings myself. That's the one that's going to turn the market out here, listeners. And Mr. Uncle Mike, same thing. What are you keeping an eye on this week until our Thursday episode, sir? As much as I want to keep an eye on CMGI earnings, that's that's a name right right. In the past with uh, Paul Orndorff and Mr. T at WrestleMania. <laughs> Not quite that far, but pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. But uh, I mean, I'm watching the 4100 level, uh, seeing if we can hold that, seeing where we're at with it. Uh, I really don't think we're going to get a ton of movement tomorrow from Powell speaking. I think that he's just going to try and 
Um, let's see. What would a football coach say? Uh, give me the punt team. I think he's just going to try and punt things and just saying the traditional things with which he's going to say. I think it's ultimately going to be a meh tomorrow, but I could be wrong. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, I'll be prepared either way and manage risk either way. Uh, so I'll definitely be watching that and uh, we'll see where things go. But uh, for now, uh, 4100 is the number with which I'm watching on the S&P. I was going to come out this week and say, hey, do you see those jobs numbers? Ha huh? ha. Huh? <laughs> and then there goes the market. There we go. All right, listeners, there goes our show as well. Unfortunately, that music means uh, we are done, at least for the old OB. But never worry, listeners, there's always more content waiting for you. Coming up in a little bit after this one. If you're on the pro side, hang out in the live. We'll beam some fun stuff in there. We'll be back in a little bit to kick off the old crypto rundown. All the assets that Uncle Mike loves to talk about all in one place. So stay tuned for that fun. But before we do that, let's go back around the horn. Mr. Uncle Mike, as our winner today, if folks want to reach out to you to discuss the glory that is Paul Orndorff or your love of Bitcoin, where should they go? What should they do? (laughs) <laughs> Follow me on Twitter at Mike Tusa, T-O-S-A-W. Uh, I try to put out a lot of content. Uh, I usually uh, tweet it out there. Uh, if you're looking for a financial advisor and want to have a conversation, check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. All right. And Mr. Meatball, you got a little bit of a hole to dig out already to start the year here. So do some researching on some 80s wrestling trivia. In the meantime, if folks want to give you some hints, where should they reach out to, sir? Yeah, come to com. I'm writing on VIX, volatility, and on individual equities uh, pretty regularly. Uh, you can check out the, the VIX Edge and the pit report. Uh, I will uh, I'll look forward to uh, you reading. Just go to optionpit.com. Hit them up and talk about Rambus, the hot new stock all the kids are talking about these days. <laughs> optionpit.com. That is the place to go to learn more. We got to get on out here, like I said, back in a little bit. For the crypto rundown, if you want to get it live, you want to get access to the pro trading crate, you want to get access to the exclusive content that is coming our way later this week. We've got pro Q&As coming up. I do believe we have uh, the rockingest of lobsters joining us to answer all of your questions, tackle the tough stuff tomorrow in the hot seat. Then, of course, options oddities coming up at the end of the week. All the other fun we have coming up, including the next episode of the Option Block coming up on Thursday. Stay safe out there, everybody. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. When it comes to trading volatility, trust SIBO, the creator of the VIX Index. For in-depth and relevant information, SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights, analysis, and positions of VIX options and futures. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cboe.com. Com slash VIX today to learn more. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.